I'm going to open the book at select board meeting of June 1st, 2022 at 6.02 p.m. Um, are there any amendments to the agenda? Hearing none, um, I will take a motion to approve the minutes of May 18th. I make the motion to approve. I'll second the motion. So do we have any discussion on the minutes, amendments, changes, deletions? You look good, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Comments from the community. Do we have anyone online? Nope. No comments from the community. The only correspondence um, we have is that uh, we received a letter today from uh, the structures project manager, which you have in your packet, saying that um, due to the infrastructure, federal infrastructure bill, that the cost of our school street bridge, just the construction portion, of it will be paid at 100%. We will have to pay 5% of the um, engineering portion of that and the right of way. But that's a really nice. Significantly will be lower than the 300,000. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want to understand. <laughs> Right. It's a big plus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have a presentation tonight from CAI Technologies. Deb, um, maybe you want to introduce to us. Um, I don't know his name. Sorry. Well, I'm so familiar, I just call him Franco. <laughs> <laughs> Franco Rossi, and uh, Franco, as you indicated, is with CAI Technologies. He's out of Littleton, New Hampshire. Franco has been gracious enough to uh, come to Wolfen to give us a presentation on uh, the services he can offer with regard to online mapping uh, a couple of times in the past. And so at this point, uh, he has been asked to come again uh, to give us a brief overview of what uh, he can do for the town and we'll get, um, I think speaking on behalf of the listeners, we're very excited about the opportunity to have our, um, our maps and our Blister card information available to the public online, which would uh, provide a real service uh, to not just look at residents, but anyone who uh, needs that information. So, Franco, uh, go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to, to uh, discuss this with you. I know that it's that uh, regular meeting, and, and you don't, don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, I have provided a proposal for the services already. I can dive into demonstrating what the online GIS service that, that, that you referred to is, uh, or we can start, I can answer questions that you may have on the proposal. What's your pleasure? How do you want me to proceed? So the, there's a copy of the proposal in your, in your packet. Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think we should just continue on with your your, your standard presentation, um, and uh, we'll have questions come up during the process. One of the things that um, uh, when we talked about this before the board meeting is a good place to look at what these services are in the production environment is some of our neighboring towns use it. Uh, so Morrisville is using it, and frankly, I believe. Quite a number of other. I part, I know is, um, is an evening. Yeah, I can show you a list of uh, 
That's my screen doesn't seem to be coming through. It shows that. Try this again here. Okay, so little... Yeah. Right. There we go. Uh, so what you're looking at here is the um, is the list of all of the municipalities that are currently utilizing this service. We serve. 650 or so municipalities. Uh, of those, 445 are using this service that I'm showing you uh, tonight. In Vermont, there are currently 60, uh, all under, well, a couple of them are under contract, haven't been built yet, you'll see coming soon. But this is a list of, of all of the Vermont communities um, that are currently using this service. So Johnson and Hyde Park, Eden. Morrisville. Oh. Um, Hardwick. Well, let's see what else is. Anyways, there's, there's just several towns nearby, but mm -hmm. also towns as far north as Newport, uh, Newport City, Newport Town. Uh, uh, so Elmore is using? Elmore is, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Everybody but us. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, I mean, it's it's we're, we're, we're building a lot of them, we're signing these contracts all the time. That's where the technology is going. It's where you know the, the municipalities need to take advantage of the technology. They've had been, been taking advantage of mapping for a long time. Now you can really utilize that and disseminate information. That's the real goal of, of the GIS is geographic information system is really to uh, be able to disseminate information, provide data. Um, especially it's especially supported by the states because when, when COVID hit, because it allows access to data without having to come to the office to, to get those data. And, and this application in particular, uh, you can make whatever data you want available. Um, so I happen to have Morristown open already, but I can go to any town you want. They're all the same, they'll look the same, they just have different data. You want me to dive in and start showing it? Or? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, I'll hit the highlights. I won't get into the nitty gritty because it would take us an hour plus to do that. So first obvious thing is search. So you can search by owner name, by street address, or by parcel ID. Most people aren't gonna know parcel IDs. They'll find by street address or owner name. Um, we are, by the way, we're live on the sites. I don't have anything canned for you. so. We're, this, we're, we're actually going to, in this case, the Morristown site to look at the data that they are making available to the public. Now, some towns already also have staff sites where there's data that's only available to staff and functionality, and some have, have, have uh, just the public site. So unless you want me to look something up, I know there's a Smith somewhere. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if it wasn't? So let's, I, I type Smith. So it's going to look up anything that might be on Smith Road or the owner would be Smith. I, and that's, it provides that list. And the more I type in, the more that list will be reduced. But in the interest of time, let's just say, yeah, this is the one I was looking for. It zooms to that property. Um, or it, do, it doesn't matter. We can go to any of them. So that happens to be one. If you've got photos in your in your assessment database, I think you do here, right? Um, they would be sure that you can show them there. You don't have to, but most towns do. There's data linked to it. So there's a CAI property card. That's a simple report, uh, particularly in Morristown. They don't have a lot of data on that because they really use the Memric uh, property record cards, but it has limited information shown there. Um, this is the NEMRIC uh, web data property card. So they use NEMRIC's web service to host all their property record cards to have access to it. So rather than uh, hosting the cards here, then we have a direct link to the NEMRIC site. We work with NEMRIC, share data back and forth. There's no additional cost to either, from either of us to the community for that connectivity. We just share the data so we can link back and forth. And you can see the, you know, the property record card. 
I don't, I don't recall, do you use Nimrick's web service right now? You do, okay. So that's what yours would be look like. You wouldn't have to do that, but you could do that. You could host the actual property record cards like sometimes, <coughs> uh, but I think this is a, a really cost-effective service and it's a good use of that, connect, of that connection. So it shows that information. Uh, in, you can show other data in, in uh, Morristown they actually have their tax bills posted as well. Different communities post different things. Are you, uh, is that legal to do things? Well, it's redacted. It's got the, oh, it's redacted. yeah, it's their redacted tax bill. So um, other communities might post the uh, surveys. I could take you to sites. Again, I, I, unless you want to see it, uh, I, I won't do it now, um, but I'm happy to do it if you want me to. But they might post a survey of the property so you can click on it and see the survey of that property. Some towns will post uh, building permits, uh, particularly towns that if, if, a, if a community is using a uh, uh, permitting system, uh, uh, computerized permitting system, we would link right into that system similar to what I just did with the, uh, the uh, number site. Mm -hmm. Um, we can consume data from those permitting systems, but most medium small com most small communities don't. I mean, those permitting systems are expensive, and a lot of them still use a paper process for their permits. So they use they simply scan the documents and link them to the to the parcel themselves. In fact, I think the proposal I gave you includes the document upload tool that would allow you to link whatever documents you want to the site. So the the data. Uh... You're, you're connected with Nimerick, so that data is automatic. Um, but other things like the Lister card and so forth, for us to maintain it, we would, we would have this upload tool. Correct? Yeah, so, well, with the, the Lister cards, I think that that service you're using from Nimerick, that web service, that's really a better solution for that, or we can alleviate your need to maintain the Lister cards, okay? Uh, but if you went with the list of cards, then we would have to build a batch uploader. Well, well, we wouldn't have to. You could give us the cards every year as part of this service, and we would upload them for you at no extra charge. Or we could do it. Or if we, gave, or if we built you a batch lot uploader, there's a one-time fee for that batch uploader, and you could do it as many times as you want. Whenever. But that information is already there in memory, and you're yeah. uploading it every year as you make changes. So it's kind of redundant. Mm -hmm. Do that. Yeah, and it and it really this the Nimerick service, especially for the cost, I think it alleviates a lot of pressure from trying to maintain it yourself and just staying on top of it and remembering it. And it's just it's a, I think it's a good service and it's a good connection. What about um so they're supposed to be going to another program, aren't you? The state the Vermont Pie? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so we yeah, work. This thing. Yep, so we work very close. We work closely with the developers of that at the state art in other states. Um, we've been in communication with them, and they have confirmed uh, multiple times that the, 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 the process we built to, to do all that kind of work won't change. They're going to build the processes on their end to make sure there's a smooth connection. So there should be no impact. Actually, there'll be an impact, there'll be a much smoother process. Uh, because it's a much more advanced modern system, but uh, but it but it shouldn't in, there should be no impact on our on this connectivity this connection. We move on. Yep. Uh, one of the next the next big tools that are used is the abutters list. So um, I'm not sure. I don't recall what a butters list here is. But typically, it's direct abutters when you're trying to come up with a butters list. Our tool, you put in a zero and you hit select, and now you see all you selected in all the abutters. Now, typically, a butter means across the road as well. So we have this add remove tool, and I want to add that one and add that one. Now I've got all the abutters. I want a abutters list. Gives me the subject parcel, all the abutters. I want mailing labels, start printing the labels here because my sheet started and I've got my mailing labels. So it's literally seconds you've got that done, which in some cases could take hours if you're using hard copy maps trying to figure out who it is and what it is. It does take me hours. 
Yeah, particularly if it's on multiple maps. Yeah, yeah so this, in a GIS, because it's one composite, there's, there's no such thing as a map limit, right? So it's, it's, it can search across maps, and it doesn't matter. Okay, so again, very quickly, that's the abutters list. You can print that, that map you're looking at there. I'll, I'll wait to show you the print tool in other ways because I'll just be redundant, uh, wasting time doing that. Um, so let me trash this out. Um, the uh, next thing I want to show you uh, briefly is layers. Now, these happen to be the layers that Morristown has. You may have all these layers. You may have more. You may have less. It, there's, it doesn't impact your costs. Whatever layers you want to show, are what we will show as long as the data exists. Part of the setup of the service is we would, we, we would see what VCGI has, Vermont Center of Geographic Information has, what, what the state might have, what you might have locally, the Regional Planning Commission. We'll put that stuff together and we'll, you decide or whomever is designated decides what layers you wanna include. Um, so, and I'll show you, it's just as simple as the click of a button to show the layer. Um, I click on a flood map because that's a very common one uh, and valuable one. And there's nothing there, but let me zoom out to the extents and then zoom back into some uh, floodplain area. Come on. There we go. So now you're looking at parcels. You can see how the floodplain affects specific parcels. While I'm showing this, I'm going to show you another very simple to use, and you'll see as hopefully you're noticing, it's just point and click. You don't have to know anything. This is open to the public. The last thing you want to do is have to train the public on how to use it. It's point and click, very simple to use once you just start clicking buttons. But I'm going to show you the measure tool, very simple to use. So I want to figure out, okay, how much of this property is in the floodplain? So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be very careful about this, but if I go like this, you'll see 0.38 of that 0.5 acres is in the floodplain well, based on what I clicked on there. Point and click, it does all the calculations in the background, okay? <clears throat> you can have other layers on, you can have multiple layers on it at the same time. So if I want to turn on my zoning, I can turn on, Man, that's ugly zoning. I'm glad I didn't build that map. But that's what the town has for, for zoning maps. And you can see, I can drill down here and see what those things mean. But also I can print this, right? So when I, when I print this, I can just do a quick map, just like throwing it on a photocopier, a quick print of, of the sheet. Or I can drill down and say, I wanna do a little more detail. I can put any, whatever scale I want. I can put in whatever map title I want. And then I can include a legend. So now when I print that map, it'll take a few seconds longer, but it's preparing a professional map with a border and a North arrow and the town's logo and the, uh, the scale and the uh, legend. Uh, so you'll see now I print that and here it is. What I was looking at, and you see the legend is showing what all those symbols mean. So you've got a professional map that you can distribute. You can print hard copy, you can make print it to PDF, email it, whatever, whatever, whatever works for whatever your purpose is. Um, when I'm, I'm gonna move it on quickly, please stop me whenever you want. Um, another thing I want to show is uh, this. Um, I'm gonna turn this off so we can see it. Because we're an Esri business partner, all of this Esri imagery is available. There's also local imagery. That would be the state imagery that they do periodically. Um, that would could be in the background. If you happen to have a project where you did imagery for, for whatever a bridge project or whatever it might be, we could also include that. I'm gonna go to, well, just I can do the state imagery. Um, and you can see how, how it lines up. I tend to go here because the imagery is the best. You see how much clearer that is. But now I can very easily with a click of a button, see how, see the properties with the imagery in the background. 
So I can point out some things that I can see, maybe some things where the maps need to be adjusted or fixed. And as part of our regular maintenance service, we fix those areas as we incorporate new data. Um, but you can see it's just extremely valuable to be able to see all that um, for all for all departments. Really, this isn't. A, I know the listers are really would like to have this, but really all departments, your, your planning and zoning and conservation, um, every single department, uh, emergency services. Uh, you, you don't have water. Do you have water here? You don't have water. No, so no, um, so those are there's a, there's a ton of base maps. The great thing about the Esri imagery is I can hover over that and I can see the actual date of the imagery that I've turned on there. You can't do that with a specific date with uh, like Google unless you subscribe to Google's image services, which are very expensive. Most towns don't want to pay for that. Um, it's not that important to them. Okay. I'm going to show you uh, just a couple more things. <clears throat> so if I have, let's just say I have a, a soils map on. Now I want, I'm talking to someone, I want someone to see exactly what I'm looking at. We have this share tool. So I copy that. You see that it's copying. I go into my email, I compose an email and then the current test, I paste that in and I email that to Kurt. And sometime when you got nothing to do, you click on that and you'll open the site to exactly what I'm looking at here. Okay. okay. The same layers on the same map extents, everything. It's good communication tool. You're looking at what? Your email is just still up there. Oh, sorry about that. This is our point of it. I hope there was nothing embarrassing. On there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so again, you can. Uh, that's a great communication tool. Okay. This in I button is you can hover over and see who owns without clicking and drilling down. You can see a lot of towns and you know used to have names on their maps and stuff. They're expensive to maintain. It's really kind of an old approach. This gives it to you. It's at your fingertips. There's no need to do things like that. Okay. But, um, from a practical standpoint, how often do those if a, if a property sells and there's a new owner? Great question. One of the one of the great things about this tool is that we you we install a data process, what we call a data processor locally here. Right. So every time the are the listers responsible for updating the, the camera and all that stuff. So every time they make changes, um, they run the data processor. Mm -hmm. So it can be and it takes it takes a few minutes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so any you know. In most towns, the, the, the listers will process uh, transfers like once a month or something. Some do it weekly. It doesn't matter. You can run it every day, you can run it every week, or you can run it every month. So it'll be as current as the last time you ran it. So, for example, I can show you in Morristown, the last time they ran it was April 13th. Okay. okay. So, and other towns will do it more often. Some other towns will do it less often. It's, it's, it's really entirely up to you on how current that is. Now, keep in mind what it's doing all year when you're keeping that updated because you want current names when you're doing a butters list and all that kind of stuff, right? So um, there, it's updating owner's name, address, I think deed reference, that, that kind of stuff. Any of the working values, all that stuff you're doing that you're working new lots and all that stuff that aren't valid until the following year's uh, grand list is lodged, none of that gets updated. You have to actively tell it, all right, check this box, now update everything. So you can't do it by mistake. You have to be telling it to update everything. So you don't have to worry about releasing data that you aren't ready to release. Now, this processor, this local processor, is it? It's the it's software interface. 
Yeah, so it, it's a, you, there'll be an icon around the desktop. You execute it, goes out, it runs it, creates the report. You place that report where the where the GIS can see it, and then you're done. It literally takes a minute. Well, may, depending on how big the community is, and this is not a big community, it may take it a minute to run, but you're, you're talking minutes, not, not even a quarter of an hour. I was thinking more of the, the physical interface, so you're, you're typing in a new owner's name. Oh, okay. Yeah, that nothing, you don't do any of that here. You, uh, with the, that data processor is built in a manner that the listers do exactly what they've always been doing. The only difference is run that, execute that data processor. What about surveys? Do you get them from the state? Um, no, we've been asked that many times. Uh, to be honest with you, I just got communication from the state. We're doing, we're, we're checking to see, we don't have confidence that they're all getting there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've got now from, from the, this year's updates, uh, uh, many communities where we know we have a copy of every survey from the last year. So um, I haven't done it yet. I just had communication last week with the state. We're gonna go into those and see if they're all there. Um, so right now, as far as getting the surveys, they're either mailed hard copies to us by our clients, or uh, if you scan it, if you have facilities to scan it, um, or scan it with an app on your phone, they're emailed to us. So we get probably half and half hard copy versus digital. Uh, copies. So I heard that the surveyors have to send a copy to the state. Yep. So did I. <laughs> not happening. I'm not saying it's not happening. I have. I didn't. I, up up until now, I haven't had confidence that it's happening. I'm gonna truth that out in the next couple of weeks. So That's we it. still have to scan them and send it. For right now, yeah. I, I, if you want me to rely on what's going to the state, that's fine. I just wouldn't do it until I truth that out. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, any more questions for um, Over here on the right, there's you know zoom in and zoom out tools. I don't need to go into that with you. Uh, what else do I want? Um, there's the uh, street view. I don't know if you if you use that at all. But it's built right into the site, so you don't have to leave the you know you stay grounded with the site on where you are. Uh, this is just Google Street View that's been incorporated. And you can see the arrow as I go up the street, it moves up the street. And as I turn to see what direction I'm looking, you see that arrow turning. Mm -hmm. So that's built into the site. I showed you the printer. Is that so Google data then? Yep, yeah. Uh, there's Bing there too. Uh, I don't know who uses Bing. I don't know if Bing exists for the, yeah, there's Bing there. I never see anybody who really uses that. Bing is Microsoft's version oh, okay. of, of Street View that everybody's familiar with. Um, there's definitely no bird's eye view in that area. You see down here the coordinates are changing. And one of the things before, I, I've just really scratched the surface. And again, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but a, an important item is this uh, help. So. There's a document, there's documentation here. So if I can't remember how to do uh, an abutters list, I click on it, goes right to there and explains it on how to do an abutters list, okay? That could be printed out or you can just use it interactively like this. Uh, also under help, there's a feature tour and it'll take you through each tool. Start here for a search, you can search properties and it goes step by step through all the features. Okay. Feedback, that's great. Uh, that's another great communication tool. If there's a map issue or a map problem or stuck on something or can't figure something out uh, and you don't want to close it and just open it back up, uh, you, you have, uh, there's a way to just get feedback and goes directly to our support staff and supporting this all the time. There are other tools that I can get into, but again, I, I don't want to drive this out. You want me to show more? So the, um, the support staff, um, is, that, is that local at your office? Or yeah, well, 
there, there, we do have some remote staff. Uh, in, we have staff in Vermont that works remotely. We've got staff in Maine that works remotely. I got one guy in Alaska. I'm in Alaska in uh, in uh, uh, Washington oh. that works remotely. But uh, it's all our full time staff okay. um, that, that you'd be working that you'd be communicating. Mr. Company itself, how does that it is, it's the local company in Littleton. Littleton, yep. Okay, so it's not part of the... Okay. Nope, I get solicited all the time, but it's not. <laughs> um, no, yeah, everything is built, all these tools are built by our full-time staff. We don't, <clears throat> we don't subcontract any of the programming or anything like that. Um, we, so I would say uh, we have 25 staff members and about half of them are in Littleton. Uh, we've got uh, three in Vermont, uh, another three in New Hampshire remotely, uh, four in Maine. So there's okay. That's good. But we're in a little, we're close by. Yeah. And we serve more than half of the towns in Vermont are our mapping clients. Mm -hmm. And as I showed you on the list, 60 was it, are our, our, our mapping clients and using this service. Which is what I've proposed to you. Right. We've got security. I mean, listers would have access to put some stuff in there. What about anybody else? Yeah, no, so it's important to know that uh, well, this is all hosted on Amazon, all of our the application and all the all the data. Uh, but they're not the, it's not using your source data, right? It's using the extract of your source data. So there's no access to your data. Uh, in that manner. But nobody can get in and change anything. This not nothing. That'd be a nightmare. Yeah, yeah it would. But we've never had an issue. We've never had an issue with it going down or anything like that. It's been uh, Amazon uh, Web Services have been a really good partner in this. And anything, anything that isn't Virtually everything is public information, as you, you know, but not everything is. For example, those tax, so it's parts of the tax bill. Um, so um, you're going to have your, your proposal includes a staff site uh, because you wanted the document upload tool. And you don't want the public to have access to the document upload tool. Who knows what you get uploaded? Um, but the uh, uh, but the staff side also allows you to have layers of data over here that you may want for local staff, you know, password protected only. And it also includes some tools that aren't available to the public uh, that are very, uh, can be very useful. Mm -hmm. For example, downloading the data. So if someone call if you, someone who were to call you and say, "Hey, I want to call. I want to. I want your 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 map, your GIS shape files. You want to share." You can download direct, you'll be able to download directly from your staff site with the push of a button and email that to you. And the other thing is I showed you the abutters list. On a staff site, you can do a buffer of a feature. So for example, if I wanted this to have the flood map on and I wanted to know everybody within this flood zone, you could then, just like you do for abutters, you could select that and do uh, uh, give, get a complete list of everybody that's within that flood. Or you may want, um, because you have, uh, you, you will have a staff site, there's drawing tools here. Uh, this is the public site. But if you did this on a staff site and you drew this line down this street, I have that. Now on the staff site, you could select that line and say, give me everybody within a hundred feet of that line. So I have everybody on East High Street. You could do that by querying over here, right? Search everybody on East High Street, but it's looking up addresses. So somebody who's on the corner of East High and Winter, they may have a Winter Street address. They won't come up on your list. So that's one way, easy way of doing it. You could do it that way and just use that add remove tool that I showed you and then include the one that's on winter too. 
It's a very, um, um, what was it, uh, versatile tool. So you said you can link surveys yeah. to the properties. Yep. What about property transfer returns? Is those linked or is it just? You can, you can literally link anything you want. Right? Documents, zoning. Yep, you can you, you can scan the PDF and you link the tool will allow you to link anything you want. It'll allow you to create, let me, um, I don't want to take, again, I don't want to take too much time. But. I'm just wondering if it can, you know, if it's one place source that people in real estate and lawyers and stuff could find out about a property in that one place. Yeah, and that's, that's uh, that reduces a lot of your local traffic in your office and requests um, because uh, this, this will get used by realtors and, and bankers and lawyers a lot. Um, and is there a charge if they print it or is they just allow um, you? I, no. view it. I use this all the time. Yeah. It's like the title searches for a real estate person and you only pay for the deed. But just the deed. But not for no, for no, on our site, there we don't have a charging payment mechanism. So if you do it, I mean, there's other sites that you might want to, you may not want to, if, if you're worried about revenues from that, most towns get, you know, they don't get enough revenue to, to offset the effort of having to do that stuff. But if, you, if you, you're worried about revenues from deed copies and things like that, you, that's a different site we don't we aren't we aren't set up for that right so everything on your site would be free that they could access that's right that's right uh i came to I, i'm showing uh littleton here just because <coughs> to give you an idea of things that uh, they're using it for now they're much more mature they've had it for several years so this didn't happen overnight but you can see here They've got building photos, they've got their property cards, they've got their building permits, they've got their plans. And so then that's how they're doing it, the document upload tool. They get a plan, they just link it to the appropriate property. And you can link it to multiple properties because sometimes a plan will be for multiple properties. Right? Um, but essentially you can literally put anything you want. We used to do a demo and, and you know just put a, you know, funny picture up there just to show you. It doesn't matter what it is, but it does matter that it's not available to the public because you don't want the public to get funny pictures up there. <laughs> or worse. <laughs> you want me to show more or do you or do you have any questions about the proposal itself? I think probably the listeners I have one question. I see a property manager going to the edge of the road. Are you changing the acreage and all those parcels? Um, the the prop right now in in Walcott, I, I don't remember your maps off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. They're going to be what you have now. Okay, okay that's going to be the same thing. You're not going to go when we when we do mapping, we go to the edge of the right of road typically. And so, if a survey goes to the center of the road. We deduct that portion in that center. And in fact, Morristown is, is one town that we did a, a wholesale project many years ago because when they were originally mapped, all the prop lines went to the center of the road. Yeah, and so did all their acreages. And they didn't want to tax for the set for the road. So uh, we went through a process of deducting all of those acreages, the, the portions that are were in the road, so that the acreage represented is. To the edge of the right away. Is that what you're going to do to our town? Um, we're going to lose a lot of acreage if you do that. Yeah, we're not going to do anything like that unless you ask us to do it. That was a project that Morristown was willing to pay for. Okay. Right now, it's going to be whatever you got now, that's what you're going to continue to have, a lesser until you have us change it. So, Tom, even on a uh, survey on Route 15, shows to the center of the road? Well, we're getting into a serious mess if you start deducting. There's a lot of deeds that go to the center of the road, a lot that don't. Mm -hmm. uh, we just keep them as they come in and not just make a blanket you know, decision. 
That's how I can. So it might be good to talk a little bit about the, the proposal and the, the process and sure. what does it take to get started, all of those details. Yep. Yeah, so the, the, the getting set up, setting up the data for the access GIS uh, and that service are pretty straightforward. Uh, however, there is a first step that has to take place in WOCA. We've got to reformat the, the data to make, to facilitate this and also to facilitate ongoing maintenance. And when I say reformat, it has nothing to do with remapping or changing the lines or anything like that. It's simply how the digital data are structured uh, so that the application can glean what it needs yeah. efficiently. Right? And it can be maintained efficiently. So the first part of the proposal is to, in fact, do that conversion. Uh, I think it was four, $4,500. Right, right. That was a one-time cost for that. Then the second part of, the, of that service is to do an update because the maps were last updated to April 1 of 2020. So as part of this project, we would deliver you data uh, current to April 1 of 2022. So there's a $2,000, but that's regular updating that you would normally do anyways for that. Okay. Um, so that $4,500 is a one-time cost. You don't face it again. That tax map maintenance cost is an annual cost, but it's not $2,000 a year. It's probably somewhere in the thousand dollars a year for the town of Wolcott. This just happens to be two years of update. Then there's a- Updating from home. Uh, up, your existing maps are current to April 1st of 2020. So we'll get the cert, anything that's been recorded since April 1st of 2020 through March 31st of 2022, as well as deal with mapping questions and problems that have come up that you need us to fix or correct. That's what that tax map maintenance portion of the proposal is. And delivering hard copy maps as well. That's one thing important to know that we're, this, this service, I don't recommend just ditching hard copy maps entirely because you're going to still need them from time to time. Some people won't make the leap to GIS. You need to be able to provide that with maps they're used to getting. Um, otherwise, people would throw grenades over the fence all the time because they couldn't get what they could get before. So our goal is to meet the needs you had before, but to take advantage of the technology as well. Then there's a one-time setup fee for this Access GIS service which is $3,000 and a one-time setup fee for the site, for the staff site implementation. Uh, that's, dis that's discounted from 950 if we do it at the beginning when we do the site. So that, that's $475. So that, that 3475 is also a one-time fee. What does that mean, staff site setup? So the staff site is the portion of your site that requires password protection. So only staff members have access to it. It has your additional tools. You could have data and also has the document upload tool capability. Again, that's a one-time fee. And then there's the annual, uh, uh, annual the annual fees are $3,000 a year for the uh, Access GIS site and the staff site, and then $500 a year for the document upload tool. There is no setup fee for the document upload tool. Once the staff site's built, it just works. So um, that's just fun. So, um, well, so you see the total cost of the project. Um, something's wrong. Yeah, I noticed. Mean, <laughs> well, something's wrong. I apologize for that. The total cost of the project is twelve two seventy five. Is it instead of seventeen? Thirteen four seven five. So the number at the top, the total cost of this project is correct, 
that is not didn't come down here. Yeah, yeah, somehow that got screwed up. It's not 17275. And, and neither is that four thousand dollar annual fee. It should be thirty five hundred. So the total cost is 13,475, that includes your update. And then the ongoing costs are $3,000 plus $500 for the Dr. Nuppel tool and whatever update costs are, annual maintenance. Because that needs to be done regardless. Um, did you kick me out or? I did, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> That's fine, we may not need it anyways. Um, yeah. And in terms of uh, the, the initial process, processing the data, what kind of timeline is that? Um, you mean the convert the, the conversion of the data? Um, I'm sure I gave you a timeline. Obviously, this can be changed depending on what your specific needs are. But so the data reformat uh, within 90 days of a contract. <laughs> The tax map maintenance would be within 45 days of receiving the final data to be do the update or uh, the 90 days. Uh, obviously we can't do the update until we get the conversion of the data done. So within 45 days of that date or receiving the data for the update, whichever is later. So it's 90 days plus 45? Correct. If it takes us the whole 90 days to do that. Um, and then the access GIS service is 60 days from completion of the data reform. So that, then it'll be up. So you're talking about five months start to finish for all of them if we use the whole schedule. And if that, you know, we obviously that can be played with. If, we, if you need it, Sooner, I'm sure we can squeeze some more out of that. Yeah, I'm just trying to get at So, from a practical standpoint, this could be available to the public in five to ten weeks. Yeah, so normally we, we make it, a, we, we release it to you, let you, municipal staff, look at it, do whatever they decide. Oh, I, I didn't really. I didn't really mean to show that, get rid of that, or can't we show this too? That kind of stuff. Yeah, so you, you just you know review it, and that takes as long as you want it to take. We like to have it take 30 days, but people's schedules are people's schedules. So we'll keep it password protected. The public won't even know it exists until we get the go ahead to release it. That's when uh, we will take the password off, and I suggest that's where, when you put links to it on your municipal uh, website. So you have a link maybe from your listers page, from well, from every page if you want. Or I don't know if you have a, I don't know your website too well. You may have a, a drop in. Yeah. yeah, for that in particular. So you may have a deal. Um, but it'll be up and not. Uh, but even though it's there, no one will know how to. You know, no one will find it until mm -hmm. until you start publishing. Right. And besides, it'll be password protected until you tell us not to. Now, is there any overlap on uh, the, the uh, service that you can have? It's co-file. Well, they have their own, they're hopefully in the cloud soon. Um, you've heard of GOV or Copile mm -hmm. as um, land records. Yeah. And that's what we use. Yeah. And we put a link on our website for them to be able to access it and go through Copile's site and, uh, and then they buy the deeds and stuff. Yeah. So we can have a link to that site on Access GIS too. You wonder where those links are. And they could link to that. And that's where, but that's where they do the interaction. Of getting the deeds and, and making the payments and all that stuff, yeah. but we could have a direct link to that. Okay. Uh, assuming they allow it, I don't imagine they would. I've never seen that go with other towns. It's always separated. You go into the town clerk's, town clerk's um, site and for the land deeds, and then you go into the listers for um, 
this and for tax maps? So yeah, well, I, I, I'm trying to think. There's one town in Vermont that we tried to do it with. They, it's not with with. Is it with Cox? Cox? Yes, they wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't allow us to do that link. Um, it's just. Easy but but we do separate. but we do another like in Massachusetts, for example, in Hamden, Massachusetts. There's a direct link to the Hamden County Registry, so they you click on it and it goes right to that deed at the registry. In the registry site, not it doesn't. It's not in our site, so you don't have to search for it again and all that stuff. We would certainly do something like that if if we could work okay. that out. Okay. okay. That whole pay scheme may may cause a problem there. So the best we may be able to do is just link to this to get them to the site, okay. and then they'd have to find it again. But I, I don't. I got really smart people that would solve that problem, not me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, the, so it, everything is uh, based online. So there's, is there a, a server or any equipment that we have to have here? Nope. No. Nothing. As long as you have internet access, you have you have access to the data, including on mobile devices and cell phones. Is a uh, static IP required? Is there internet service? No. I don't. I've never been asked that, and I don't understand the technology, so I can't okay. tell you. Because it's all in the cloud. Because right. nothing's hosted here. Yeah. I'm sorry. Because nothing hosted here. So right. There's yeah. no need for a static IP. Because we do know with the, the profile system, they require a static IP, which is. Oh, no when they go in the cloud, that'll go away. Yeah. 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 That's good to know. I don't know how to answer that question next time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No questions? I've already used up way more time than you probably yeah, wanted me to. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a time saver. <laughs> Very informative. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'll, I'll leave you uh, my cards too. If you think of something, want to give me a call and ask me a question, uh, just feel free to do so or email me. Can you shut down? Yep. Right. Thank you, Franco. We appreciate your coming back to Wolk. You're, You're getting welcome. to know the town pretty well. Yeah. By now. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm happy to do it. Okay. You're close. I mean, it's. Yeah, maybe the next time you go to class, come back, we'll have a brand new bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, almost. Almost. We found a good restaurant in Little Town. Chang Thai. Oh, yeah. It is good. Ooh, wee. Yeah. Oh, like that. Oh, yeah. Chang Thai. I've been there um, since I came to work for this company before I bought it. Uh, 30. Thank you too. I love this since there. I grew up in Barry. Um, I, I love it since there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. 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 Are we still from Boston, New Hampshire? Yeah, yeah, we got probably uh, at least three quarters of New Hampshire. Uh, virtually all of it. We're, we're strong in Massachusetts, especially as you from west to east. We got a lot more eastern towns, but we were virtually all of Berkshire County is our northern side. And now we have clients as far away as um, Sitka, Alaska, the kind of is our is our client in uh, County Colorado. <laughs> Street view, Street view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, nice. Thank you. 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 Thank
Oh yeah, I know that. <laughs> What's that? You just said if you, you go to Barry and throw a rock in, you can hit a rock. Yeah, the funny, funny thing is none of them are related to me. <laughs> oh, no, I got two brothers that still live there. But yeah, I'm not related to any of the Rosses. I don't have any Rosses in the United States. Stop Rossi. We have a little bit one. Okay. Well, especially my dad, Franco Rossi. You go to Italy, Franco Rossi is like John Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I like your email, Rossi. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. All right, thank, thank you. Got some daylight to get home in. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, this time of year. Gotcha. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, Let me put this back on. No, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, bye. So, how do we want to uh, uh, move forward with this? Or do you have more questions, concerns? Um, do the listers want well, I'm not technically savvy enough to have intelligent um, questions, but it looks really interesting to me. If it'll if it if it'll save a lot of work for you folks and make it more efficient. It sounds it's really going to save a lot of time for me at the zoning aspect of it. Maps, especially the above us, I spent a lot of time. And it's a it's a real service for the public. Yeah. It's a, Oh, absolutely. I mean, at best, uh, as listers who are available 12 hours a week. Yeah. So, you know, clearly that's not meeting all the needs of the public when they need something. And so they may end up waiting days. You know, if we miss it on a Thursday and we're not back in until Tuesday, you know, that's a lot of downtime for yeah. the professionals who need the information. And so it would be. Um, a, a true service for the public. And um, yeah, frankly, I think we have to look to the future and realize that uh, listeners may be fading out. Dying breed. A dying breed indeed. And so uh, to be able to take advantage of the ARPA funds and get this on the ground and running now um to me is definitely the way to go. Well, that's a good endorsement for me. And you know, you know, it sounds like it's nothing but a positive thing. Yeah, yeah. I really don't see any cons to it, um, other than the cost. Well, we have this one-time opportunity, and I think that's what the ARPA funds were meant for. Right. Um, to put things in place for the public. Um, Most of that's a one-time fee, too. Yeah, and I also want to point out, since COVID, there's a lot more activity with parcels changing hands quickly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you can update quicker than a year. Yeah, you know, yeah that was really good to hear. Yeah. So we I think that it. would be yeah, I, I do think this fits squarely in ARPA, in the sweet spot with ARPA. This is exactly what the funds are for. Yeah. And I do, I don't use all the detail, but I use it. You know, I can get a test. I need, you know, a deed, a tax bill, and a Lister's card. And I can sit at home, not waste gas, and just download it and have it done in five minutes, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah. Well, I'd like to propose that we, we move forward with this opportunity. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'll second that one. Because <laughs> it sounds good, it sounds efficient. Any other comments, discussions on this? Not then, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? 
So carry. It's going to take a while, but. Yeah, you want to see it for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, when you guys retire, you can retire in peace. You train a monkey to take a peace. Come on, it's the push of buttons. We won't be able to start until we finish the grand list and right. get that done for the year. Well, he might not be just waiting like this minute. But... Did he send any contract or he'll just reach out to him? Or... No, I yeah, just the proposal. Okay. Uh, next step will be to reach out to him. And what about putting those surveys and permits on there? Well, let's go one step at a time, I guess. Go one step at a time. Yeah, yeah. Just that well, there's a this this proposal does include the upload tool. Oh. So really, all it is is a scanner, uh, and it, and the scanner depends on how big the documents are. Um, oh, for survey, they're going to be big. So I. I those scanners, they won't be used that heavily, I don't, I wouldn't think. Not after the initial upload. Not after, yeah. Um, so um, when I looked into pricing of those things, they can range from two to ten thousand mm dollars. -hmm. But at ten thousand dollars, it's a high speed, you know, crazy thing right. that we yeah. don't need. Yeah. Can you rent it for a month? <laughs> Uh, I wonder about asking Morse phone to give you theirs and just charge us to be. Well, I would think too, you need to think if you put the surveys on right now, the town office charges. So you might mm -hmm. want to think about doing that through Copile, which has that access. Everything that goes through this, there's no fee. So what you're, 30 what you're doing is you're saving. You know, people is, are printing it themselves instead of charging them 10 cents. And I'm assuming they would have to reduce these surveys to print them. Is that what you do when you print those surveys? I, I don't print surveys. Oh, okay. Just the listers cards. I would think that most people wouldn't have access to a big printer. Yeah. Right. So maybe it's just viewing. I mean, they could, I don't know. That's an interesting question. Okay, so let's move on to the um, street naming ordinance. Everyone, there's comments in here from the E911 coordinator that we need to go through. We asked for comments. I had also asked um, Kirk to go and check out Elmo. Were you able to do that? Yeah, they're basically done the same thing as here. They're not doing anything different. It's, it's just a post of four four five with the numbers going down. So the post is four feet. Right. It's a four by four pressure tree. So probably it's a six foot. So it's two foot into the ground. And it's just numbers going down on the road side. I think I noticed a few of those. They seem to show up pretty well. And the numbers are reflected. So right. show up nine and hopefully it must be some reflections in the black letter. Yeah. So I didn't uh, type up a new um, ordinance so that we could sign it tonight because we received these comments and we were still having further discussion and it kind of seemed um, a waste of paper. So I made you a new, another copy of what we discussed last week. Um, we didn't make any decisions on them, but I wondered if Jack could um, go over for E911, some of the, the issues that the board needs to consider as we're making these changes. 
Well, thanks for asking for input. There were just a couple things that I noticed and that I would bring up because um, Tom and I have also had access to the uh, state 911 board uh, proposed changes to their standards. Uh, it's still in draft form right now, but uh, we were able to check those out. And so any comments I have here are based on um, my viewing of that. Uh, the uh, proposed uh, language from the DRB uh, left out a couple of words from the state standard. And so I thought that might be a little deceptive. And so in section 4B, uh, a driveway having one or two addresses on it may be defined as either a driveway or as a private road. I just thought that was a little more clear to include that language. And then um, I guess my issue is, and you know, Linda, can you go? Can we go back? Because I couldn't find where that exactly was. Four B is in here, is in ours, or is in the um, of the proposed uh, nine one one standards. Oh, that's why I couldn't find it. Uh, and where would you like to put it in our ordinance? Well, I don't have. That and from the oh, yeah, that's really okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, in that blue section, yeah, so uh, it says a shared access having two or more addresses may be defined as a private road, but the state standards say defined as either a driveway or as a private road, and so. I thought that was uh, not being completely clear. Um, if we wish to be in compliance with the state standards, which I think is how that was brought up at the last meeting or two meetings ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, I well, yeah, I was going to say, Linda, certainly you're uh, well aware of how statute or how legislation, uh, how laws are drafted or crafted. Uh, as a lawyer, I certainly spent a lot of time reading statutes and laws and interpreting them. And to me, the goal always is to have the language as clear as possible so that uh, you know an average person can understand it and hopefully be in compliance. And uh, I just noted that the DRB proposed language adds a condition if approved by the Development Review Board as a private road as part of the plat review process. And at that point, uh, you know, well, as a 911 coordinator or as a citizen, that's a total breakdown for me because now I'm lost. Uh, and I guess I would have to know something about the development review board or the plat review process. I think to understand that statement, I would have to then go to the zoning bylaws uh, and find that. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's where clarity breaks down. Um, and in addition, I think that you know pulling a, a clause out of the zoning bylaws and including it in a town ordinance is kind of picking and choosing uh, you know a zoning rule or regulation and elevating it to a higher standard that a town ordinance carries over zoning bylaws. Uh, I just didn't think it appropriate to isolate and elevate a discretionary section of the bylaws to give it that greater strength and status. Um, but yeah, I, that's all I have to say about that because I don't understand what it means. <laughs> 
Um, but then in your uh, section two on street naming in the proposed ordinance, uh, it said private roads shall be named. I was, you know, just as a, um, well, I don't know, either as a 911 coordinator or as a citizen, I was unclear as to who would initiate the naming of the private road, whether a road name would be provided if the residents on that road requested, or if that would be the town automatically initiating the process. Um, so what I think happened here is that um, it was part of the original ordinance and it would have come right before the blue section and it would refer to up above where the select board would name it. But because it was added, it kind of got separated. I wondered if um, the private road should be up at the top, you know, closer to each street or road shall be assigned a name when we select for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would help if it was Yeah, I think it got, it got isolated. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, hanging out there by itself. Right. Uh, in section three, oh, oh, yeah. Um, Tom and I had talked about this, uh, where it says odd numbers are on the left, even on the right. And uh, in checking the state standards, they're using um, the language odd numbers on one side, even on the other side. And I just think that's a safer phrasing. Uh, we could potentially have a situation where it would be arguable whether the odd numbers are on the left or the right, depending on guess which way you're approaching it <laughs> and so rather than you know get hung up on something where um addresses could potentially have to be changed in the future uh it's just safer to say that you know what we obviously currently do is have odd and even numbers on opposite sides of the street yeah i think this was probably written when it was originally started and now it's already set so you're just continuing i was think, trying to think of the continuity but um well there already is continuity because it's already taking place i think when they started they mean when you start like one two three going up that's right yeah i know but i mean I, the other way Everything was based off from the post office. Yeah, we don't want to get that confused. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's the way it started. Yeah, yeah I, I know. know. I know. Oh, you went from the post office one direction, and then it went the other way towards Harvard. So this was the way it was set. Yeah. And that's right why here. it was set that way. Does it say right or left? Huh? It was originally. Yeah. And I'm talking probably 25 years ago. Yeah. That's the way the state suggested to do it 25 years you know, ago. It's kind of a moot point because your own number, you just add some. So that's what I said. This was probably written in the very beginning. Now it is a moot point because it's already set. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I think, I think that language is fine. Your suggestion. Then under um, four, paragraph two, which says within 60 days after getting a number, then the owner has to put a number on the front door of their house. Uh, I thought that might, that could be eliminated to my knowledge. This hasn't been enforced. I don't know how it would be enforced. Uh, and it wouldn't be relevant if at some point, the town does choose to go forward with townwide 911 numbers. So every ordinance has to uh, either be designated a civil or, um, what's the other one? 
No, civil or there's two. There has to be penalties by law in an ordinance, something to make it enforceable, or you should not even have an ordinance. You could just have a policy. But um, so I, I think the wording on the face of, of the building, but I mean, we have some, I'm not going to name names, but we do have someone in town who has refused to, you know, put up, you know, traditional type signs and, and stuff. And I think we need something in case someone refuses to allow um, a number to be put up. But I think the wording is wrong. Well, otherwise, I would think that uh, you know, once the nine one one coordinators notify a homeowner of their number, then in sixty days they'd have to go see if they had a number up or bump, but um, bump. yeah, and we have not. Yeah, there's going to be a penalty. And what the heck would anyone refuse to do this for their own health and safety? <laughs> um, some people prefer people didn't know where they lived, or you know, you know, there's a lot of pushback. You know, they they come here for a reason to, in the backwoods. And, well, if they're a fugitive, they can go find some place more they're going. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think it needs rewording. Um, but there has to be some sort of um, something in there in case someone refuses um, the number to be put up. I don't think it needs to necessarily be on the house or so forth. Mm -hmm. Linda, do you mean civil or criminal? Yes, I couldn't think of that word. As they, they'd be designated as civil or criminal. Um, Ordinance for penalties. And then otherwise, um, paragraph three refers to the size of the letters as being not less than three inches. And um, I noted that the 911 signs that we have been purchasing um, and providing those who request, uh, the numbers are two and a half inches high and one and a quarter inch wide. And so assuming we would have a maximum of four digits and an address, all of those, all four digits of that dimension would fit on a sign that's 12 inches long. Um, the, I noted in the proposed 911 you know, state standards, they suggest digits that are three and a half inches high and two and a half inches wide. And so for a four digit address, that would require a 16 inch sign, which does not seem workable. That's what we're using now? Yes. That yeah. looks perfectly visible. And yeah. so, yeah, Tyler- Any Curtis bigger would look stupid, I think. Um, well, yeah, and uh, you know, Kurt, as you're saying, it's a four foot post, you know, above the ground, you right. know, and so in my uh, discussion with Tyler at the state, I said, well, you know, if, for example, we were a 16 inch sign and you put that on a four foot post, and like you were saying, it snows, you know, you're going to see the first. Right. You know, two digits. Or something. Now these can be located on the side of the visible side of the house. Yeah, well, if Elmore, for example, every address has that four foot post uh, with the vertical the the sign on. Oh, well, yeah. at the driveway. My house is right near the road, so I wonder if it still has to have a post uh, yeah. yes. the road. because it's absolutely consistent. Yeah. And so that's the way they went. Um, but Tyler's response to me was, oh, it's just a suggestion. Crestbury, Crestbury was on the building. Right. The red, red yeah. white. Yeah. They're on the front face of the building. Well, but that's not going to work for many, 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 many
and what it will be. No. So those were just my thoughts, and I appreciate your happiness. I mean, if you take the young road up here up this east hill, they're about a mile down the road. So if it's on the house, I know. No, I understand that. But I was just thinking of the houses like mine, where I'm right near the right. very visible. Oh no, he says this is it. Okay. Because they don't want anyone to deviate. I wouldn't say that. That's the wrong person there. It's a rebel. <laughs> no, it's just they're saying it's good. It it's safe. Safe. Yeah. It yeah. is consistent with fire department and ambulance. I'll give Gray the spoke when I'm starting. I wonder how many cloud checks they can have. So, um, so we have many questions here before we adopt this. I think we need to um, decide whether um, we have any interest in um, putting up E911 signs as part of our ARPA money or not, because a lot of the wording in this ordinance discusses houses, putting signs on houses and mailboxes and so forth. So I think um, that's a decision that we need to come before when we approve this. Um, so what are what is the board's thoughts on that? How are they feeling about that? We don't have a price in front of us. I'm gonna have to research that. But... <coughs> Well, how much do each of those signs cost? Is that something that the board wants? Um, I mean, it's easy enough to figure out how many addresses we have in town, and um, we know how much a sign costs and how much a post. So we could have that figured to your next meeting. Is that something you want to yeah. wait? Um, but I, I don't want to keep pushing this adoption off and writing this. So I would like to know if people are leaning in favor of doing that or not. I know you want to wait for the price, but um, that, tell me how you want to move forward with this. Can be installed to an installed price? Or? Yeah, we, we, could, we could price out the whole project. Um, but my personal feeling is this is another good ARPA expenditure. Yeah, as, as I mentioned in uh, our last meeting, our survey did not write rate this very high. Yeah. Um, but I think as far as putting in the structure for the town to grow, it's all the sense in the world. And the comment is, um... I think our responsibility to look after the health and welfare of our citizens too. And I think this would fall within that um, yeah. category. They, they might not feel it's important right now, um, but if they need an ambulance sometime and someone can't find them, then they would. And we're also, um, you know, monies that we might have spent on um, our two on our bridges, um, the savings, you know, that we don't need to put towards that infrastructure would be good, you and know, to look at um, the funds. I guess the key thing here, there is some concern about consistent placement. And I understand for inclement weather and emergency situations, people are trying to respond. They don't want to be guessing what the sign might be. But is it in our town plan to be totally compliant with 911? I just didn't know. The other thing is, I have some concern. How can we enforce? You know, I don't, I respect everybody's privacy. If somebody wants to live like a hermit, fine, but they're taking away from themselves mm -hmm. if they don't have a 911 address. I mean, now they would have to sign a confidentiality and then we wouldn't be able to do it, correct? 
But then they don't get a response then. And then they'll complain if something happens and they nobody else. Well, we, do have, go we, do have, we do <laughs> have one person at a time. Anybody, anybody can be found. You go on what Google Maps yeah. and find, I mean, find anybody. You know, Franco so can find for <laughs> yeah, so, for but it's the way it is. Deb, can you find out, or and you might know if the confidentiality um, agreement still stands? So when it first came out, we do have one person um, with that. Um, yes, I'll check on that. Okay. I think it's going to come down to another issue is being four foot and now you have a sign that's a foot. So anything three foot or more for a snow bank, it's going to start covering the letters. Mm -hmm. Well, this well, year we can check with Elmar. So if you're putting it by their mailbox, then in a driveway, they're supposed to keep that cleared anyway. Right. I would say See, that I would, <laughs> I would try to do it as yeah, close to that, that as possible. I mean, it's not going to hit every single person. There's always something special there. <laughs> I mean, the thing is in Morrisville and other towns, Hardwick, Derry, Montpelier, if there's a hydrant next to your home, mm -hmm. you have to clear it. It Please. is part of their agreement. Oh, you, mean the, you mean the nice places they don't make you go out and shovel them every time the snow starts the water in front of me? We do in those towns. Oh, I have to go do that every time it gets snow. All right, so we're saying we're leaning towards that. I, I uh, think this, the, posting a sign would be easier than this mailbox, doorway, yeah. house, right. next to the driveway, next to the road. Okay. Yeah. So at least we know where we're heading for. Um, I, I mean, I was on the fire department for 30 years. If you didn't know the people in the town, you didn't know where they were going. No. Because there was no signs. And you have a lot more people coming in that are new here. I guess my concern with the person that wants that ultimate level of privacy is I mean, I can understand somebody not being social. I just want to be a loner, but I say, why take away your opportunity to get emergency services? And again, they could, anybody can go on Google Maps and find out where they live anyway. So it's not like the town's giving away their secret, but I don't know if it's the logical work, but uh, it's too bad. All right, I will try to put something together so we can find the The after one after we do that, the other thing we need to do is. Um, Set, I think, uh, set a policy um, on street signs, who's paying for it, who's paying for private ones, and so forth. Um, we need to have something written in writing um, on that. Okay, that's all I have, unless anyone else. You think of anything, give me a call right. in the next two weeks. <clears throat> Project manager's report. Okay, so <clears throat> I've kind of created a laundry list here of, uh, of activity. Um, and just uh, we'll, we'll jump around a little bit um, on the progress of a number of projects. So first we start with infrastructure. Um, uh, we did find um, an individual who is uh, capable of doing the painting and doing the power washing, uh, fixing the gutter, et cetera. Um, I think they misunderstood the job because the quote came out to $35,000. <laughs> I know. I would just. <laughs> Uh, but I, I do want to find out if you look at the garage closely, it isn't it isn't serious disrepair. Uh, and uh, I 
really want to keep focusing on this because uh, I think it's really important to get ahead of it. It's going to do nothing but cost us more money. Um, so does that mean you're going to ask them to rebid? Or? Yeah, I'm going to ask them to rebid. And plus, uh, I only have one bid. I'm going to go after multiple bidders. It is difficult to find people to do this kind of very is there someone you could separate to if you have a hard time? It might be somebody who does painting but doesn't. Uh, oh yeah, how yeah, well. yeah, absolutely. And I'm, you know, I'm asking around. Uh, uh, you know, Dean seems to know an awful lot of people who do this kind of work, and he's been helpful with that. So, but, but the idea at this point is uh, to do a rebid on this. <clears throat> so um, fuel contracts. Um, this is where the bad news starts to come in. Yeah. So the our heating oil contract with Borns expired yesterday, um, and we had a fixed bid from them at two dollars and fifty nine nine uh, for a gallon, and they will not bid on a fixed. Uh, any, fixed rate anymore because of the volatility in the market. Yeah. And so what they're saying is it's going to cost $4 plus oh. for heating oil um, until the market stabilizes some. It's going to be a big hit, a uh, very big hit. And I think we were talking the other day about um, you know where we can use some of our funds from this year. Um, this would be a place that I would highly suggest that we have. Yeah. Because our fuel costs are going to go up significantly. Well, I, I have been talking to Dylan a little bit too. I have a feeling we won't be getting the paving rates. Um, I think we would have heard. I also think we need to consider um, something has to be done about the North Volcat Road. Right. Some of them. Um, Some of the. He says about 150,000 a mile. And the beginning and the end of that North Bucket Road are just deteriorating horribly. Right. You mean some of the nice potholes that go by every day? They go, A, Y, that, E. <laughs> Small. So, no. um, just throwing that out. It's not nothing, but I'm just. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to think of some way we can do something if we don't get a paving grant. Okay. Um, so um, we're just going to have to watch fuel prices. Um, I know that Dylan's being diligent about it. He's trying not to uh, make as many truck runs, um, et cetera. So uh, everybody's kind of in conservation mode. There's no telling when this is going to come. What's that doing to the what's the diesel? Is the diesel price going to stay stable? Is that going to go to like heating fuel? Diesel, oh well, yeah, diesel will be going up also. Yeah. What is it, six something a gallon now? Oh, almost so. <laughs> it's come down to five ninety nine. Nice. Oh wow! Thanks, All right. Thanks, Tom. Um, so grant opportunities, there's a new one that came along, it was called Safe Streets and Roads. Um, it's a federal grant, part of the federal infrastructure um, program. Um, my suggestion is we go ahead and apply for it. Can't run it. Right? So. Can't Do you hurt. have to apply for something in particular? Uh, well, um, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with the grant, but right. do you have a project? A particular project? Yeah. Well, paving might be one. Try. Yeah. I didn't know if you had, um, you had to have a specific project in mind applied. Yeah. The application is now they they're, they just announced this and they're doing a seminar next week online. I think I can answer that question. Basically, this is just an announcement. Just to keep in the back of your mind, at some point, I'm 
hoping to have some safe walking paths along School Street once the bridge is in, and they put in a pedestrian sidewalk. So right. Um, mowing contract, just want to uh, let you know that our contract with Blaisdell is uh, for one more year, uh, till June 23 or something. Um, yet he did indicate that he wants to renegotiate. Is that right, Belinda? Yeah, well, you know, fuel prices and stuff, and he thought his that the um, contract was up and I said, oh, and then I talked to you and we looked it up and it isn't. So I sent it to him and said, uh, we have one more year and I haven't heard anything back. So, but we just had a conversation about. So he wants to add, uh, he wants what? No, he just uh, thought the contract was up and wondered oh. if we were rebidding it for three years. Oh. And he did let me know that on most of his contracts, he was going up 25%. Is but then he, um, I looked it up and it, it, we're not even doing that. Is he um, uh, trimming? Okay. Well, we, we did talk about um, rewriting. Is he, has he done it yet? Yeah, he did it yesterday. He did the outside perimeter of the fence. Otherwise, Kurt and I we did. have we went uh, and moved the furniture and everything inside the park uh, because otherwise there are dandelions and other weeds growing up through the Adirondack chairs and it doesn't look like a park. It looks like a wasteland. Back well, at least you helped the bees. <laughs> well, it's true, we didn't mow ours for a month, and it looked like. Well, I planted yeah. pollinator flowers now in the bed. Yeah. So we did, we did too. But we, yeah, we did it out of the, you know, the stupidity of goodness. Well, I guess somebody needs to go over his health line and it's cleaning up and trimming and. According to this contract. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I think he needs to do a better job at it. Um, I don't know if he just ran out of time or what the case is. Well, he hasn't been able to find any help, so he's been doing it all himself. Right. He did tell me that. He said nobody wants to work right now. Well, I don't understand that. I mean, COVID is over the worst of it. So many people can't get help that they need, and, and they're paying good money. Yeah, better money than they were before COVID. Yeah. Okay, so uh, roadside mowing. Um, Dylan um, had reached out uh, to an individual who has a, their own uh, mower, um, and. Uh, can, has put in a bid for townwide mowing at $9,000. Um, and I think last year he came close to $7,000, was it? Yeah, with uh, somebody from our own department looking at the running of it. We just uh, rented it out and then whatever salary we gave them. So the, the $7,000 include his salary? Yes, no. Yes. But he didn't, was not able to complete the whole time. Right. That is correct. Right. And, and he drove 100 miles an hour. <laughs> and then uh, and the machine, the rental machine was not the best. Uh, so the quality was poor. Um, and with the price of fuel, it, my guess is that this bid is competitive. <clears throat> All right. So dogs. So are we looking for more? Or are we going to accept it? Or well, the question is if we can find anybody else who would look for more. Uh -huh. If we can't, um, and then this bid seems reasonable to the board, I think we should move them and lock them in. Right. I, I we had a really hard time finding anybody last year. 
that's why we ended up doing it. Is there any in the being the contract stating that if you didn't do the complete down, there would be a deduction? Um, that can be, I, I, there is no, I haven't seen a contract, um, but there's something like that can certainly be put into it. I don't want them to, like I've been going through five road constructions. One last year started at the end of April and didn't end until November. I don't want to see it go all year. Yeah. It should be done within a six to <coughs> time frame. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Yeah. So it isn't back up to here again by the time they're finished at the end. Right. I think we, well, there's a, there is a timing issue. You're, you're absolutely right. And I'm afraid if they don't start soon, it's going to be over two foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is take a couple more days to see if we can find anybody else. If not, I, I agree with the urgency. Of Try to pin this down. I mean, it sounds like a good price. I'm just leery that if they're going to take a long period of time, if you wait too long, it was a three foot height and new yeah. stuff starts coming up in, it's just going to do another lousy job. Yeah. Cutting it. Depends on the lines. So we'll, um, can we just make a motion that um, we will? Um, let Kurt uh, reach out and try to find uh, any other mowers. If not, he'll write up a contract. Um, he can just email it to us and then we need to respond quickly if you want to add anything to it and then we can proceed to sign it as approved. Okay. Is that all right? Sounds good. Do we need to make a motion on that? I'll make a motion to that. No second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Okay, dogs. Um, so as of today, um, we have 27 unlicensed dogs left. Um, it actually is 17 individuals. So. Uh, several of these individuals that have multiple dogs, uh, but there's 27 left that are unlicensed. Um, kind of, you have the list there of those that are unlicensed. Um, there's there's a, a, a number of them that I would think would be fairly easy to get going. Um, and then um, start to whittle it down from there. A letter has gone out to um, all of these, and it's been, it's had some success, it's brought it down significantly, uh, but this is now the board's responsibility um, with 27 dogs. I have two that are waiting for appointment, and uh, I have another one, Ashley Douglas, on there who will be coming in tomorrow. Um, so I think the process needs to be um, phone calls um, and try to beat this thing down. Yeah, I see several of them are expired rabies. Yes, that is my concern. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of rabies. And there's some, I mean, that, that I'm just kind of surprised at. I think, yeah. You know, that is, I think they just need a friendly reminder, I think. Some of them are dogs about this big too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is now officially kind of fallen onto the, the board's the board's purview, and I will initiate these calls um, and just keep reporting on where we're at. We'll probably end up with a handful that are going to be problems, and we'll have to decide what to do with this. Wow. Well. Um, Elfro Bridge. Uh, <clears throat> so that 
the Gopher Bridge is posted at six tons, and uh, there's a, a resident in that area that um, is pretty diligent, diligent about uh, reporting uh, heavy trucks going over the bridge. And um, so we, Dylan, I mean, uh, uh, Lucian um, had indicated that this six ton posting was something that Skip put up and is not necessarily correct. Uh -huh. Maybe you know the history on this, I don't. Do you recall that one? Yeah, I, I seem to. Because um, they did not want them to use coal for, for heavy trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, huh? And I don't know if it was ever updated. Um, I know we used to update it, but I didn't update it this year to have it still restricted. So Kurt did, though, in February. Oh, they did, yes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes we did. Um, That's correct. But um, does the <laughs> go online and find out, get the bridge inspection for that and see what it says it's been carried? That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to yeah. figure out. Is there's a way to do this? Yeah. Um, I, I, a I was looking for a bridge inspection. Which is, uh, what do I want to say? Not bridge. Inspection, sorry. Of when it was inspected last and what was the we load. Go right on the Agency of Transportation, the municipal thing, and, and okay. look at all your bridges. So Dylan's supposed to be doing that every year and printing them off. They're in the cycle and they, they're not mailing them to us anymore. We have to go on and do that. Okay, good. Because I couldn't find any current ones. I was like, what? <laughs> so I'll go on and look. Um, okay. Because uh, the gravels um, want to have, have called Dylan in and wanted to get permission to use the bridge. Uh, you know, they're obviously going over with much, much heavier weights than that. Yeah. And so my thought is that if the bridge really has a different rating than what we're supposed to that, we need to know what that rating is and what the inspector says it is. Yeah. And then we can repost it. Does that make sense to No, yeah. But is the restriction for a year or can we lift it at any time? You get some pretty heavy loads. If we loads made it up, we can take it down. You get some pretty heavy loads come over there from time to time. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of trucks will take that as a shorter route, save them going to Arbiton North. Yeah. And yeah, no, I mean, it makes sense. You know, I know why they're doing it. And the other thing is that if they're trying to get to North Walker, their alternative is to go all the way down to 15 in North Walker, which is a dangerous corner when they have a big truck. Nobody oh, likes that anymore, that term. No. And we've complained about it. We've had to stay that about it. But no, I don't see anything happening. I, nothing's going to happen because it's all on our property. Yeah. Um, it's a town road. And at some point, we're going to have to get an engineer to redesign that connection. Because even Bob Bodies, he can't make it up there. They're half in the, they're on the other side of the road and half on Mauritius property. They can't swing it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why Gulf Road looks good, <laughs> um, which is, and, and the other thing is that the uh, the flood mitigation project is recommending that that bridge be replaced also um, for a whole different reason. Yeah. And they would they would make it a seventy foot span, um, it'll, so it'll be a two way bridge. That's not going to happen in the next year or so. Uh, no, maybe not for a great deal longer than that. The way things are going. And the boiler, the boiler in the garage. Uh, the inspector, uh, it was been turned over to uh, an inspector. The inspector came over today, uh, disassembled the boiler, literally disassembled it. Um, and 
Um, it's going to report back to the insurance company on its findings. I, I have no idea where this is going to go. Um, I think a little bit of what I was reading between the lines with the inspector is that he found the timing of Gorns being here doing a cleaning and the fire the next day. Curious. So, oh, so. Mm -hmm. This won't be a good one for us to share it. Uh, no. So, the first time. So, uh, it's fortunate that we're in summer now. Um, we have signed a quote for the propane price and for the overhead heater. Um, but uh, until we get a finding from the insurance company, we, uh, my suggestion is we wait on it. He thinks it's going to be 10 days to two weeks. I wait. I have a, there's some ball there. Yeah. If we just remove it and move forward, we've defaulted. So that's where that stands. Um, I got a request from Dean and Darts for Justice to ask the town if we would uh, allow for a coin drop. And I know we have a coin drop policy, but I wanted to get everybody's thought on it. Uh, the fire department does this, obviously, but this is dogs for justice. I think it's justice for dogs. Also. So what do they want to do with the fire department? It's dogs for justice. Um, <laughs> the fire department does theirs later than when were they wanting to do it? Um, I think they're open. Because I know that, um, you know, they're kind of hurting with this. Um, money for this fighter up there. Right. So there's quite a bit of rules they have to follow. Do they know that? Are they familiar with I the rules? There's, there are definitely rules. But, um, About different signage they have to buy and so forth. Yeah. Disclaimer for if they get run over. Thank you. No dogs in your throat. Yeah. <laughs> Cats living in your stuff. Well, I wouldn't do one until the bridge is fixed. Exactly. I'd be really aggravated. If I got stopped twice, yeah. Oh, you're talking about, oh, yeah, yeah. Suppose I guess I'd want to know when they want to do it. Okay, I'll get more details. The end of June, they will be done, the bridge. And the um, guardrails. That's the guy I talked we yell at me for hitting something. <laughs> um, sheriff's contract. Um, you know, the sheriff's contract is due at the end of this month. Yeah. Um, and we postponed it from our last meeting. If there's any potential changes uh, to the contract or modifications, I haven't heard from anybody of any thoughts that you have. Um, I, I honestly don't. So I don't know what we would put in that contract that would uh, significantly change what we have now for service. Maybe better response to when we need them for dogs. No, that's not their responsibility. No. <coughs> so I haven't actually even looked at it. So okay. I didn't know I was supposed to, we were supposed to respond to you. Look it over and respond. Oh, uh, yeah. Because we had it, it was in our last one. It is, and I have it. But I sorry. Yeah, no problem. We got to the end of the month. Uh, transfer station, just an update uh, the security. Uh, the garage door was installed at Big Cans and Bottles um, with a lock. Uh, camera sign is up there. The gate has been welded so it can't be removed. Um, we and also, as I mentioned last time, uh, we were inspected by the state. <clears throat> um, and there's a couple things that have come up since as they reviewed their photographs. Uh, they're they're fairly minor. Um, primarily, it is we have a sign up there that says it should say 
uh, band and it's electronics and it lists all the electronics, computers, so forth and so forth. Yeah. But the portion at the top that says items banned has faded so bad. Oh, you can see it. So, so it looks like, so it looks like you're inviting this stuff. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. That's not good. So they contact, you know, they contacted me on that. Um, the post, the permit has been posted up there. Um, so that's all sweet and everything. Um, on the highway, uh, we have a letter of intent for the grants and aid program. Okay. Um, Safe seats, streets, and roads, I've mentioned. Brook Road, I talked to uh, Lucian today, and he's still shooting for July. Although it sounds like the casting is not happening. Have you heard from that? Yes, I've heard from him. Um, uh, so the process is that, and you know what the other board might know is that. Um, the company that's creating the culvert or whatever does shop lines, and they're reviewed by our engineer, Joey Wilson. When they reviewed them, they saw that um, it was supposed to include epoxy reinforced rebar. Um, that, that's a state requirement. It wasn't on the drawing, so they sent them back, uh, you know. Got in touch with um, GNN and told them that that needed to be included. That's as far as we know. Lucian said it only took um, like a week or so for the culvert to be made. It's a really um, compressed, fast drying that you could actually get it the next day. Mm. So uh, I don't, I don't know. Well, Cody did. Call me to the, today to confirm when to take out the temporary bridge, but I couldn't tell him anything. And I'm waiting to write a letter to everybody on that road too. I'm all right. waiting on that date. Right, right. And the and the road crew is also waiting on that date because they need to make some. They have to make that temporary, temporary. driveway. So are we going to go back to this letter of this um, resolution? Um, A letter of intent? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's the grants and aid program. Right. Um, so you're familiar with that? Every year, the um, highway department um, has got one of these grants and aids. Um, Programs and usually LCPC um, instrument is uh, instrumental in doing all the paperwork. It's going to change for fiscal year 23. So this is just a letter um, that we need to certify that we um, want to apply. For some money, we can get up to $20,000. Our share is $5,000 to construct um, or fix those segments to bring connected road segments into full compliance with the municipal roads general permit standards. So I guess just we'd be wanting authorization to sign. Yeah, to authorization to uh, sign this and to move forward with it. Um, the segments, uh, uh, we think you have to have 15% of segments complete. And um, Dylan does have them on his paper. He hasn't put them into the computer yet, uh, but we're, we're moving, moving on that one. That has to be by the end of this month, I believe. Well, it has to be by the end of December, but we wanted them in sooner so that we know if we hit the mark or not. Right. Um, Rob Moore said he'd help them. Yep, and Rob has been helping. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah Rob has. Great. So, um, 
this requires a select board signature. Yeah. 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 So. That's all. I just make sure that the municipality um, want the board wants to apply. That's all. Oh, yeah. Of course. Thank you. And if one of these segments is on a class four road, does it still qualify for this? Um, there are some monies. Um, it doesn't spell it out here. Um, I'm reading something. Because in Dylan's uh, budget right now, he has 5000 in class four that he hasn't even used this year. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if maybe. Well, he's going to be going over and over. Okay. He's going to need it. Okay. And and fuel. So okay. you, well, so you really to... need to if he needs to look at that and he needs to do the high priorities first. Um, I just didn't so know if we had match right now. It's five thousand match, but it would be um, uh, in next year's budget. It oh. could it could be it has to be completed by September thirtieth. 2023. So if we work it right, it'll be in next year's budget. Okay. Okay. So we'll, the board's okay with it. We'll pass it around for signature. Um. <clears throat> so the town. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Town highway. Town highway structure grant. Um. So I don't know if you know what this number, but the, no. the town, uh, the the engineering. Of, I'm ready to inform you that your application for the town highway structures program grant for Town Hill Road engineering grant has been recommended for approval, um, which is good. That's good news. This is where. Our, uh, just to move the culvert on Town Hill forward. This was denied as uh, as an emergency grant, um, but has proved that the engineering stage, which we're doing now. So the engineering grant is for one hundred and five thousand, and that's what District Six recommended for us because they're not sure whether. Uh, fixing the culvert is the right answer. They need to do a hydraulic study. Um, it'll do all the environmental, blah, 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 all the things that, that the state requires. So we were awarded that grant. Um, I do have a question. So our engineer um, that we have wrote the bid proposal. Now is is that bid going to be good enough to to have him do it? Continue on. Um, so do you have to rebid it? Well, the project may require to undergo an environmental review. Or, uh, I don't think so. Um, I think that's boilerplate stuff. I submitted his bid for the grant. And I see and the, he had a discussion with that with him at a discussion with the district six too personally at that meeting with Michelle. No, with oh, the two these guys, two other guys. Yeah. yeah. So I wondered if we were comfortable when we get the grant agreement that he just do it. That you just do it right. I can call to All right. verify that. All right. I'll, I'll do that. Okay, segment reporting <laughs> we just talked about. And my final one is East Hill Road. Uh, as you know, uh, the sheriff went up to East Hill Road. Uh, a letter was sent as a follow up stating that. Um, had had until May 31st to vacate the property. Um, the uh, sheriff's detective went up today um, and found him still to be there. Uh, he asked uh, at 
how's the moving going? Are you getting things ready for the move? And Ed told him that he's not leaving. He refuses. Okay. He's, he's uh, trespassing at this point, right? Oh, absolutely. All right. I'd say they go in and arrest his ass, bulldoze everything. He can sit on the rubble if he wants to or leave. But this is enough for this. Yeah. I mean, this is this. Well, this is where this is where we're at right now. So so he told the detective that there's no, you know, he and he has quite a number of supporters. Uh, oh really? Yeah. I think I think neighbors that you know probably trying to help in, in some way, but this is where five years into it. Um, Enough. Yeah. And so the plan is, is that uh, we're going to get a solid date from all metals as to when they're going to come in for demolition. Um, and then the sheriff will go up in advance. And if he refuses to leave, he'll be arrested. Right. And then Dean will be notified right behind him to pick up the dog. Um, and uh, also we'll put out, uh, have a heart traps for the feral cats, and then the demolition will occur. It's, it's enough. I mean, everybody's been profoundly humane and diplomatic, and that's all used up. It's got to be, yeah. It's... And I think it's, you know, it's unfortunate. It really is. And I think he's, he's hurting himself here. Um, but he has, it's unsafe. I mean, he's, he hasn't got sewage or anything acceptable. No, no. In, it's in violation of zoning laws. I think. In the last I've heard, there is at least one or two mother cats with kittens now. Okay. Is he not right? I, maybe you can't say that because you're, I, I, I'm sorry, I worked with mentally ill people for years and elderly. It, it, is he a vulnerable adult? I'm sure he is, yeah. Boy. Just be careful because you might be getting yourself, I, I mean, I know you know your jobs, I'm not telling you, I, I don't even understand it. But if he's a vulnerable adult and this is going on, be careful. Of what being hurt? No, I don't even mean that. I mean, it, it might not look good in the legal world or something, or in the mental health world. So, are the police are there? I mean, do they have anyone within their department that could kind of assess that when they go up? Yes. So they need somebody, I think, to talk with him. So maybe, you know, next time we talk to them, we suggest that they have someone in their department. I, I realize where you're all coming from. He stopped and talked to me as I'm outside. And I feel safe because I got a dog that she- Why did you come up all the time hitchhiking? Yeah, but I mean, I don't think he's working on all thrusters. I mean, to live like that, I mean, some people choose it, but just talking with them and knowing the people that I've worked with for 13 years and knowing people that I know, it's like, I don't mean he's going to go out and shoot anybody. I mean, he might get a following that it might come back on you guys. <laughs> yeah. I know that's a risk, but he, I think what Linda said is a good idea. Yeah. That somebody may want to go in and talk with them. I don't really know anything about him other than he stopped and talked to me as I'm out there working away on the yeah. car. I've it's talked to him several times. It seems like a reasonable guy. It's just he just, but he absolutely refuses uh, to acknowledge that uh, he's squatting on town property. And we want to sell the property. Uh, butters want to buy the property. It's it's swamp area in which there's no sewer. Yeah, I, I went up there once. I don't ever want to go there except when well, I'm concerned about the animals. So the environment but, is being poisoned up there. Um, and it's a legal issue that's been turned over to the sheriff. But it, it does seem like, you know. Well, if you can recommend a social service person to get up there, that would be great. 
I don't know what the sheriff can come up with. Because he, I really feel he needs somebody in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he actually, when he was originally evicted, uh, the state did attempt to help him. And social workers attempted to help him. And he came back. Yeah, that would be a clue right there. Well, maybe not, but I mean, to me, it's the more I hear about it from various people, to them, it's like, and, and I don't really want to get involved, but I just am like, my conscience has been bothering me having worked for mental health, and I know I have to, you know, I, and I'm like, do you think he needs some support? Yeah, it's, it's a hard situation. It, it is. isn't. I don't like being in it. Um, you sure you <laughs> anyway, that's where we're at. Okay, I just wanted to throw that out there, just having talked with him, and I'm not a therapist, but I have plenty of education and I have plenty of experience, and I thought he, I mean, you're doing better than me, Linda. I would have picked him up. <laughs> um, I have for years, it's fine. Yeah, but you know, I just, and my dog would allow him to car anyway. So that's my request. So the one thing is the um, lease for the loaner. That's next on the agenda. Wow. Isn't it? Yeah. No. Can we? Yeah. Because um, um, I think it should be a vote. Uh, so I guess uh, I thought it was on the agenda, um, but the um, uh, I did put together a multi-year plan um, regarding equipment and you know kind of the best practices, the best way over the long, long term. Um, to handle the finances behind major equipment. It is just a roadmap only for your review. Uh, this goes out 10, 20 years, and other select boards in the future will you know, want to maybe follow it, but it, I think it is a good baseline plan. Um, and what it does is it, it uh, Kind of puts an anchor down as to what does it really cost to run a garage with heavy equipment. Uh, and, it, and currently we put $77,000 into uh, the equipment fund. And uh, if we were to have all equipment in rotation, that number would go, um, would go up uh, to, um, I think about 120,000. However, having said that, what we currently have on the plate is um, the town truck, the uh, town truck uh, that we've been waiting for and hopefully, hopefully will be delivered in November. Uh, it broke down yesterday for a $1,200 tow to the shop. Um, and we'll see where it goes from there. So yeah, this, this is what happens when we wait too long. It's not anybody's fault that we waited. It's the supply chain. The other is the loader. Um, we had took three bids for loaders, um, one from uh, Volvo, Cat, and John Deere. The only one available in stock and, uh, and recommended by Dylan and crew is the Volvo from CRW here. Uh, we do have a lease agreement, uh, a lease application, um, and the rate is just below 4% right now. And so the question is um, to go forward with that. Do I have further questions on that? I've been enthused about the Volvo right along, but uh, it's a bird in the hand. 
Yeah. And it's yeah. a high quality item. I know it's expensive, but you, you'll have it. I'm just afraid we won't have it for plow season if we don't jump on it. Okay. Yeah. How are we going to fill some, those trucks? It's the most important piece of equipment we have. Because is, it trying make, is it trying to make a motion on this? Yes. yes. All right, I make a motion that we pursue the uh, purchase option for the Volvo motor as it's available and of high quality and much needed. Okay. Is a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? No. Are we able to give a different way of financing it other than through that? Yeah, this is actually going to be called State Bank out of Kansas. That's where we're finding the best rates here. We did get a quote from Union Bank locally, but they're not quoting on a lease, they're quoting on purchase. That makes it unaffordable. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. We talked about the town garage quotes. Um, plan to clean out the schoolhouse. You guys, you guys went to look at it tonight. Um, have any suggestions? At this time, or do you want to discuss well, it and bring them up next time, next meeting? We saw a lot of scrap metal, and it would be a matter of getting it hauled to the transfer station. There's now always scrap up enough to warrant taking it to the scrap yard. You're, you're going to get the same amount. Oh, yeah, you're right. They, they would pay us. Because they're going to pay us anyway. Oh, okay, good. And it's a shorter distance. Oh, we can yeah, do it on a Saturday or something. Yeah. There's old heaters. There's a hot water heater. There's old fans. You name it. That we could get rid of easily. The other thing that we thought about was there's doors, windows, and some cabinets. I think some cabinets. And some children's desks, we were going to go to resource mm -hmm. and ask them if they were interested in them. Okay. And if they were, what they would give us for them. Oh, resource won't give me anything. But at least it'd be cheaper than they get to yeah. land. Yes. And if they get reutilized, that's a wonderful thing. Well, those are those institutional doors, aren't they? No. These are just regular and hollow internal doors. The cheap ones, but the windows are the single pane. They're what would you say, four foot by eight foot? No, probably that. Someone might want to put a cold frame or something. Yeah, cold frames or uh, like making that. a pot house, whatever. Yeah. But the children's desk, I don't know. I don't know if we have anyone that's doing. What do I call it? Home, home study. Homeschooling. Homeschooling, it'd be ideal up to, a, I don't know, maybe a eighth grade level because you can adjust the legs on the chairs and your tables. So I don't know if we ought to. Well, why don't you take the inventory and, you know, we can fill a front porch form right. and get rid of them. We just want to get that stuff out of there. I mean, there's a dozen of them of those desks. And if you want to put them on there to ask someone that wants to take them. Just okay. leave the name, number, and give them the date and time when they can come and take them. But it's if the other thing is just getting the scrap metal some way to haul it up there to the transfer station. You think the uh, road crew could leave their small truck here um, like on the weekend and you could fill it and then we'll take then they could take um, well. They could slowly, you could slowly do it. Right. Um, I think the one ton truck is actually not the one ton. That doesn't require a CD though. No. 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 
No. Even I can come. Oh. You're, you're volunteering? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I like SUVs. So why don't you figure out maybe sometime we can a date that you want to work on that, and then we'll get the truck over here. And you can report back next time. So Dave. I'll, I'll try to get all the resource. Okay. Who's coming to make it? Those yeah. are the pickups. Now, isn't, isn't Brian Burgess manager down there? He here? was. He was. He isn't? He was. I haven't been in there in a while. I have no, I have no idea who, who or what. But if they want to take the windows and doors, save us trying to get rid of them in the landfill on a transfer station, save a lot of money. So we're going to review the delinquent tax policy. This is one person. Yeah, oh. it's, uh, <clears throat> this is uh, actually Krista Perkins, um, with, in, with whom we uh, created a payment plan for, um, for taxes last year, and also gave her access to the transfer station to reduce the health hazard effectiveness. Um, and currently she's at $800, I believe. Almost, yeah. Uh, almost what? 800, yeah. Yeah, 800. For garbage? <laughs> yeah. Garbage? And, yeah. And the garbage doesn't seem to go down at her her place. I don't, I don't know what's happening. It must yeah, be she's she accepting donations for her other friends. <laughs> Uh, I'm and sorry, I should be cynical at this, but so something something has gone awry. I, you thought that that was really a good plan, a good way to help her clean up and etc. But it, over after a year, it, it's it's not working. Um, well, then this she's at her break. Still owes 500 from last year's taxes, plus she's added plus another 2,500 just barely from this for, year. From this year's taxes. So, so it's one of those situations where it's just uh, getting worse and worse and worse. So she did not, she signed a contract and she didn't keep to it? No, her son in law was coming in for a while and he'd drop 100 off or you know, 40 for the garbage and stuff. I was seeing him for three weeks, at least, probably four. And then he kept telling me that she was going to come in and license the dogs. That's the other thing. She has to license her dog, or her daughter has to license her dogs there. And Kurt did get a complaint from a neighbor that lives up the road on Maury Hill. She came to pay her taxes and made a complaint about the dog. Well, there's a lot of complaints. Yeah. yeah. Well, We've we've made an effort. Yeah. I, I just don't I don't want to be Simon McGree here, but maybe it's just because I'm old and don't have the patience I used to. Yeah. But uh, if she's not complying, even though I had a very reasonable arrangement, then woe unto her. So I think we have to let her know she can no longer take garbage. And that her tax delinquent tax uh, agreement is null and void. And that we'll I'll have to Mm -hmm. Well, it's pretty much with all that garbage, it's a condemnable situation, isn't it? Health hazards, et cetera. No, it's, yeah, it's really bad. It's rats. But it's I won't good. buy it in tax sale. Well, why can't you <laughs> get it on a health <laughs> condemn it or something in a health thing? Well, let the health department come in and give her the kiss of death. That would be burner. Yep, so we do send burner up there. Burner goes up once a week or so. Um, and nothing changes. Just nothing changes. Maybe need somebody needs to go with her. You know. So I've talked with her several times. Mm -hmm. um, we've really, really tried to get every opportunity possible to, um, to not. And I just don't get it. Uh, also, we tried to refer her to one of the ARPA programs, uh, which would 
for individuals that are having tax difficulties or maybe facing eviction because of tax difficulties um, can, can help her out. But she hasn't pursued that either. No. She refused it as a as she doesn't take uh, handouts. Doesn't take what? Handouts. If she does. Well, she's going to be homeless if she doesn't do something. We have had a few people in town who have applied to the BHFA um, assistant program, and we're just waiting to get payment on them. So it works. It yeah, works. It and she's certainly qualifies for it. She just refuses to do it. Well, I mean, how much more can we do? Right? It's and it's an ongoing. You say the garbage is actually multiplying. That's the weird thing. That's the yeah, weird thing. Yeah, it's, it's it's she's out of time. I think mom is she's taking donations weird, from her loved ones. Build up the pile for an Ill, illicit dumping site. But okay, it is unlicensed. It's, it's, it's a health hazard. Oh, yeah. And that's what bothers the neighbors because, for good reason, I mean, rats come into their yards and their arms and so forth. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think we just got to push forward. Yeah, I do. So I can send a letter about the taxes if okay. you want to send a letter about the trash. Okay. We'll go from there. The other thing, just because we're on delinquent taxes, um, this year has been very interesting. Uh, I did send around an email the fact that we did have more um, delinquent taxes this year, but it's actually because of the escrow company. I'm having major problems. They're saying they sent the checks and we have never received them. Or I get them and they're mangled and I have to apply for another check or Maybe they went somewhere else. I don't know. But taxpayers are upset. Yeah, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's and that? I keep referring them to go to your escrow company. One guy goes, well, I never talked to them. Well, this is your account. You have to talk to them. So, And yeah. I say, give them my phone number. I'll talk to them and explain that I've never received this check. It is kind of strange that this happened. I think it's just Postmaster has finally uh, screwed things up really well. <laughs> no, it's, it's happening throughout the state. Yeah. yeah. Even found out I, that I, 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 I take one of these. It's I, happening I in mean, Mary. It's yeah. happening in Williamstown. I didn't mean our local people. Yeah. I didn't mean our local there, postmaster. One guy goes, well, oh, gee, you're supposed to be in with my mortgage. And he gets a thing from the town clerk that he's delinquent, and then the next thing you know, well, it's not delinquent. We got the check two days ago. It's so this the is what also yeah. said, uh, no, it's the banks. I did get one mangled in the mail on the 21st, but it's just they it said, you know, they they didn't mail it, they mailed it the 10th, and I got it the 21st, and it went through some process and got held up. And the second one was the FedEx guy told us they pick a town because they don't have enough drivers of where they're going to deliver that day. And they try to rotate it. And then Mr. Rep, who was very upset and, and thought that I must have lost his check, he finally called and got somebody who was actually honest with him and said it got held up in their mailroom and never got paid. This is bullshit. Really, I mean, we're talking monies here that are critical. We don't, we don't get, I hand deliver our repair and fuel budget payments to friends. I do not send them in the mail anymore. Well, Mr. DePina came in today and he sent his, um, what was it? He, he, he knew he was late and he sent it. And by the time he got here, there was more in, uh, penalty applied because he said, I should have just drove it up. He said, <laughs> it would have cost me less to drive it and spend the gas than to come, you know. And he did. He came up with the $28 yield. <laughs> because we have a, and that's the other thing that's been there because people don't understand that they voted on this at town meeting, that we have a floss. Slide wheel scale of 3% penalty and then 5% penalty and then 8%. Penalty. 
One woman caught me up and screamed at me for sounding her two different bills. I said, if you actually read the enclosure with it, it explains that this is how the town does it. So we might try to make this simpler. Yes, yeah, send one bill at the end because it is too confusing. They can't understand it. That's but what I'm the thinking. thing is, is they have to be able to pay the three percent if they don't know about it. They need to figure it out yeah. by looking at their bill. But that's the problem. Yeah. They don't understand that. And the escrow people assume they're more just to pay. So I don't blame them, but I say you have to talk to escrow. So one thing that's not on here, I did call Matt Foster. There's no mask requirement at the school, but it's optional. So I don't know what you want. Uh, you need to get in touch with Bill. I did. Uh, and uh, about whether they need microphones or things set up, whatever you need, you need to let. So Dolan's going to be there. So he, well, I'm just going to bring the microphones we had before and just do what we did. You brought the last time. Remember the handheld? Yes, those are yours. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. we will have one for the audience. We hope to see everybody there. Oh, yeah. I want to thank you for what you said in the newspaper about being four. I'm not trying to get rid of town meeting or screw anybody over. No, I do agree with you. I think it's, I totally agree with it. Yeah, I'm not out to get anybody or take away their job or get rid of town meeting. I'm out to help the taxpayers and the people who've lived in this town and who can't come. They have a legitimate say. They should have a legitimate say. Yeah, well, I agree. I've had five people come up and go, this is going to get rid of town meeting. No. no. And I looked them straight in the eye and I went, what? Why don't you just tell them to call your wife? No, it's easier to explain to them. That it's more democratic that you have an Australian ballot so everyone has a say in it. You still have the budget where you can come and vote and decide on it. I just hope they acquire some information along with their blank ballot somewhere I, 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 before I they fill it out. Like people just being nominated from the floor. I think you should know who your candidate is for running you know, your town and have an opportunity to talk to people. Um, well, isn't that what you do before? We couldn't because of COVID, but you have people sign up before that they want to run for them. Only for COVID, but it, uh, it, it, we didn't have it before. You, you know, I understand. It will now if, if it passes. Or don't you let me see that you pass for stuff for town. Anything yes. else? I know it's been dead. All right. I make a motion to adjourn. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. I, I have been for somebody to do that. Yeah. 830. Oh, no, what's the talk? Sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 Y